What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. And today, it's the end of the week. We're taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart and the altcoin market. Of course, we'll touch topics on the wacky wild things that have been going on in all markets, because that seems to be the theme of what's been happening for the last like three weeks, is that we've had kind of chaotic action everywhere and trying to tie it all in together. In yesterday's video, I was talking a lot about the Dow Jones. It was the thing that I was watching really all day to see if we would get some type of breakout in there to continue following along with a completed ABC correction. Overnight with the Dow Jones futures, it did get a pop up out of there. So fortunate to see that, see that we're still continuing on our journey. So long as we're holding above $32,000 over here on the Dow Jones, it looks just like what a normal ABC structure looks like before it heads off and starts another run going into another new all time high. But of course, 32,000 would need to be the hold level down here. So long as it does, looks awesome. As for Bitcoin, kind of a wacky volatile night overnight. Bitcoin fired itself down to about 38,200 and 50 and then overnight fired itself all the way back up to over forty thousand dollars again and now pulling back again at the same time that the dow jones is having its pullback as well so it's not typically as you know correlated as that we see it all the time on a daily time frame that these things can deviate from themselves the broader picture is when you know the Dow breaks out into new all-time highs that typically sends the cryptocurrency market onto a bull run with it. Daily volatility can absolutely be different, but interesting to see how correlated it's really been over the course of the last several months. But it's been a little while since we've looked at the charts from this perspective. And with Bitcoin, we've you know compared it towards the inverse price chart of Bitcoin multiple times. You can look at this whatever way you want. You know, we can look at the current Bitcoin price chart right now and we can, you know, flip it upside down. This is how we're all used to seeing this thing right in here, right? But kind of helps remove some of the biases that we have in here to understand what reversal structures can look like. We can also go from the other angle too. We can, you know, put this back to standard scale and invert the other one to get a better idea of how these things play out. And one of the things we talked about, you know, when the fractal was playing out here that Bitcoin had followed for six and a half months, you know, on whether or not we're going to have kind of a long and grueling style retracement come in in here for Bitcoin and that, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there in the market. There's a lot of frustration out there in the market because Bitcoin has been ranging in here with this chaotic kind of price action. And in these long and grueling style retracements that you have. That's essentially what you have the whole time. You have ranging crazy price action that takes place the whole way through here. And when we look at this thing from our, you know, our visual perspective of it, you know, we just can't really make a whole lot of sense out of the chaos that goes in in there. But what happens is over the course of time, eventually it gets its way back to retracement levels. And when it's played out long enough, we see that there ends up being an actual ABC correction that shows up in here, heading back to retracements, heading back lower, and then back up to more retracements once again. And so when we look at this from the perspective that we look at it usually, right, we're usually looking at the inverse price chart of Bitcoin in its current format to reversal structures in there. It doesn't seem like the chaotic volatility and ranging of Bitcoin will come to an end anytime soon if this is how we're going to play this thing out. That just that's kind of the ex expectation to have moving forward for Bitcoin, at least for me personally. We studied the gold to silver ratio on the same style. Same thing goes on up in here. Tons of volatility that takes place in here. And we've studied the XRP price chart to show how much volatility goes on in here. And it just feels like it's slopped the whole way. And we'll, we'll flip that upside down, get an idea of it, right? Put this one back up here too, right? So you see, you pull back down to these levels and it just feels like ranging the whole time. And we look at it and we say, oh, this was awful slop the whole time until we throw retracement levels on here to see that it pulls back up into to retracement levels with A, B, C corrections. Just they go slow, they're ranging, they're sloppy. And, you know, I always described it as being like the long and grueling retracement style, right? So making a whole lot of sense out of the daily volatility that's going to end up happening for Bitcoin if we're in this style of a structure. It's going to be very hard to make any sense out of the daily volatility that's happening in here. And one of the things I keep seeing is, you know, people saying, hey, there will be confirmation of breakout and it's a breakout trade if Bitcoin can get above $45,000, right? So we've had kind of this level up in here that it just hasn't been able to really get through so the concept of it is right hey if we break out above that level then everything is good to go and this is a, a full-blown reversal move up in here but we know if it's abc correcting in here and doing something like that right well any breakout trades up above here you know this thing could stop out at, at any point in here and then head back down lower again for a b wave so 
I keep that in mind. I'm not so convinced that it really means anything more beyond that as for a level. I mean, so, you know, day traders, right? Day traders saying, hey, it's a big deal to catch this, I guess, to try to catch essentially the area right in here. But I don't think it really means anything more than that if it does actually get above $45,000. Like, so just throwing that out there because I've seen it out there that, hey, if we break above $45,000, it's a big deal. But I've just shown with ABC corrections and whatnot that it's not really that big of a deal if that's all we're doing. And for example, like if we compared this to XRP down in here, right, it's like saying, hey, we were able to get through this level. It was a breakout trade that happened in here, like saying the same thing about Bitcoin in here at 45000 Well, if you ended up buying the breakout up in here, you know, look what ended up happening throughout the course of time, right? And so that's kind of the same concept in here. You know, you buy a breakout, yeah, but, you know, this thing could, you know, it's still just probably doing something like that. So not necessarily that the breakout means a whole lot. And same thing goes for Bitcoin with the other structure that we've been looking at, right? Comparing, you know, current Bitcoin price action to other Bitcoin reversals, whether they're inverse or tops or bottoms, that in this type of movement, there is no real breakout trade unless if it's like super short lived and you're trying to catch really small amounts that any attempt at any type of breakout trades that you tried to do in here, they just weren't short, they just weren't long lasting, right? And so even if you said this was a breakout trade up in here, when we finally got through here or through here, right? Still, it still pulls back. So just something to keep in mind that if we're in this style of move, right, you would expect lots of volatility in here. Breakouts don't necessarily mean breakouts. It's just upward ranging now i posted this over here on twitter yesterday and i like i was playing with this yesterday afternoon i was like oh man it's kind of like a monumental time maybe <laughs> and i was like how do i post this over there on twitter and not like scare everybody but just kind of show it for the sake of showing it and so i'll read this to you and we'll take a look at it together but i said i was touring around on charts and was inquisitive today this is nothing more than me just having some fun with some charts. That's it. Not a prediction, just showing time overlaid. And that in the 2018 bear market for Bitcoin, it took 332 days from when the peak hit until it started to capitulate. If we draw that from the day Coinbase IPO'd, which was a six-month top, and the height of on-chain activity and retail investor FOMO, we're on day 331. Again, I'm not predicting this. I just wanted to show it. That was the height of retail FOMO. Retraces are the most common thing to occur in Bitcoin and all markets before crashes happen. We have not had a retrace whatsoever, but it will be nice to celebrate getting past that date in addition, Bitcoin and crypto tends to follow the stock market. Like I've shown, the Dow Jones is doing a typical corrective ABC structure with waves of equal length. But if the Dow started changing or something and the Dow started breaking below 32,000, we'd have something different. And if that happened, it'd be back to the drawing board. Otherwise, I thought it would be celebratory getting beyond the time frame of 332 days. Like I always say, I'm in the belief that Bitcoin and crypto follows the stock market. I see an ABC correction over here, over in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Dow Jones has not hit a 4.236 extension. This setup that I've been following looks great to me for what happens before another run-up happens. If 32,000 got taken out down in here, that would change this picture. But we see an ABC, we see waves of equal length, and we see that the B wave came back to the 702 retracement before doing the C wave of of equal length. So I see no reason to be panicking over the stock market. And as you guys know, I've always preached that I think that crypto follows the stock market and I'm optimistic on the stock market so long as this is what we're doing and so long as these levels down here hold. But this weekend will mark that time period of how long it took for Bitcoin to capitulate during the 2018 bear market. Again, this is my belief. This is what I think is going to happen here in the crypto market. And some people would say, you know, which one is better? Would you rather have a capitulation and get it over with and get moving back to the upside now? Or would you rather have this thing drawn out for an insanely long amount of time, you know, to each choose their poison, right? Structurally, this is the thing that makes the most sense to me. But I thought it was interesting to see how much time had elapsed since the day Coinbase IPO'd. And tomorrow would mark how much time it took for Bitcoin to capitulate. Otherwise, it'll just be another day of keeping eyes over here on the stock market as we head into the weekend. And while we've had a lot of crazy price action over there in the stock market, I'm curious if that time period of insanity has come to pass. You know, one of the things we were watching was oil, the dollar, the dollar is getting up to, into retracement levels. 
and oil saying, you know, anytime it's done anything like this, it wasn't sustainable to be able to do that. And as we can see, it essentially had the same run up on the same amount of time frame in here. And oil has been pulling back pretty good. It's kind of not really making headlines that it's really kind of paused out in here, but it's down, you know, 16, 17%. And, you know, for the week, it's actually had a pretty negative week with a pretty big upper shadow candle. So I'm curious if that's the end of the crazy oil ride. Otherwise, hoping for a positive close for the stock market as we head into the weekend. And we know that next week's our big week with the Federal Reserve interest rate hike. So it has been two years since the Fed started really massively interfering in markets. Of course, they've always been interfering, but as we know, C-19 happened two years ago at this time. It was also the same date. So sitting there thinking, you know, 332 days, March 12th. Why does that sound so familiar? Why does that sound so familiar? March 12th. And that's when everything was happening with C-19. That's when those markets were capitulating back in 2020. So we're going to hear from the Fed next week in regards to federal interest rate hikes. Will the market lose confidence that the Fed has any capability of being able to control inflation or will they panic and think that they're going to overdo it? Next week, we'll get our answers. But until then, I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. I want to thank you so much for watching and I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up for the week. It's been a rough week for me. I've been sick all week. Today, I'd say I'm like 75% better looking to go into next week at 100%. But all right, that'll be it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for something to do throughout the weekend, you could check out my website over here, which is bcbacker.com. This is a course I put together. It's where I deep dive into the previous Bitcoin bull runs and the previous altcoin market cycles, tying them all together to show how the cryptocurrency market has worked in the past. I talk about my personal exit plans in here, and I teach you how to set up your own charts and your own indicators within TradingView and CoinTrader Pro. Most recent market update is in there on February 28th. You can check out all of this educational content over here on bcbacker.com. You could follow me over here on Twitter at bcbacker. And I want to thank you so much for watching my channel. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need to pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.